We were just chatting right now. Well, first off, Bryson Tiller, thank you for joining us today. But the last time I saw you, it was video chat. It was during the pandemic, and here we are in person. How do you like it? Did you like, you know, being inside during the pandemic? Definitely, yeah, yeah I loved it, yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. It was great for me because, you know, I didn't have to get on the road and go tour and go rehearse and do none of that. I got to just keep making music. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know what, people, I feel like people judge me because I enjoyed being in the house a lot. You know, I'm, I've am i always been like a homebody and like being in the crib, but I, I'll be honest, whenever... Like, they told me, like, okay, you have to be in the house now. I started to go a little crazy. I was like, okay, something, something's got to give. Like, after, like, two weeks or something, I was like, all right. Oh, you know. so you don't just don't want to be told what to do. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. Oh, that's oh, that's most humans, right? Yeah. We don't want to be told what to do. Well, it's so amazing that you're stopping by. I know you're on tour right now. I am. How's tour treating you? Uh, good, good. I've, I've received a lot of love from all around the world, um, I am exhausted, though. I gotta be honest. I'm so tired. I know. But uh, I'm looking for ways to, like, kind of, like, revamp and make it feel like the first day of tour. Yeah. Uh, again. And I'm hoping, you know, we can start that with New York. What was so special about London? Uh, London, is just, man, you know, they just showed me so much love. There was 30,000 people over, uh, like, for three nights. I'm um, not in a row, like, not 90,000 people. Um, right. Um, but anyways, it was like a total 30,000 people for mm -hmm. three nights. And um, it was just great, man. They just really loved me a lot out there. And, um, you know, I really got to see that um, this time around. I was like very, yeah, yeah I was blown away. You felt that? Yeah. It yeah. Did, I don't know. It just feels like I should just be from over there or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, don't try to disown us now. Hey, you know, I'm just saying they... <laughs> They show more love over there than they do in the States. Well, sometimes what happens is that when artists, you know, go somewhere else where they're not frequently there at, yeah. you know, they're appreciated more. But that's like human nature, though. Yeah. We don't really appreciate what we have till it's gone. Right. Yeah, that's Unfortunately. True. That's true. So don't hold that against us. We're I just still, humans, I Bryson. I still love them. I still love everybody over here. It's all <laughs> yeah. good, you know? What's, what's the one song that... I don't know. It just either gets you emotional while you're performing or it's just received a different kind of feeling this time around. I feel like it's been pretty, like, everything's been pretty much the same. Same. I don't feel like much has changed over the years as far as performing certain songs. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not, not sure not, nothing one. specific? Well, what did London like the most? You see, I, I, my tone was a very jealous tone, right? <laughs> So what did London, London like the most? They loved everything. <laughs> everything about me. Everything. Every second. Wow, okay, they're setting the bar up really high for us. Yeah. Okay, well, where's your favorite place? Is it you going back home and performing, or do you not like doing that? Because I'll be honest, sometimes, you know, family starts asking for a whole lot of tickets, it's a lot of energy. Or do you like going home and performing in front of, you know, your hometown? I haven't performed in my hometown in like five years or something like that. Is that on purpose? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Why? Um, they want tickets. Everyone wants tickets. I have some personal issues with the city. Not my fans. Love my fans. Everybody. Of course. You know, my fans are amazing. Especially my hometown fans are great. Uh, but it was just some some stuff with the city of Louisville. You know, like yeah. recently they just put up Static Major, Static Major's uh, hometown hero banner. But, uh, you know, I just felt like they weren't putting up enough black people in the city. You know, it was just just a bunch of, you know, non-black people. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, man, you know, we got we there are black hometown heroes from here. Like we need to show kids and people from Louisville like, you know, mm -hmm. like Static Major is one of my is my hometown hero. You know, he was the one that made me be like, wow, you can make it out of this city. Mm -hmm. And, like, I feel like that's what the Hometown Hero Banners are supposed to um, symbolize, you know what I mean? Just, like, somebody who made it out and who has a lot of um, influence on the culture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that didn't happen for a long time. But recently they just gave it to them. So kudos to the city of Louisville for finally making that happen. Uh, congratulations to Static Major and his family. Mm -hmm. What do you miss about home the most? I know you haven't been back in a while you know, for performance-wise. But is there anything, is it family? Is it, you know, a favorite place? You're just like, yeah, you know, I enjoy this part of home when I do get a chance to go back. Or that something you, you know, you can never get anywhere else. And, you know, it's the only place I can experience this at. Uh, it's got to be 
the feeling mm -hmm. in the city of um, when it, like Kentucky Derby is going on for sure. Mm -hmm. It's just a different type of feel, you know. Everybody's looking for an outfit. Everybody's, uh, you know, you know, if it's a good year, we got some sun and everybody's just feeling good. There's a lot of cookouts happening, um, you know, thunder over Louisville or so the fireworks shows. Like, that's a good time that I can't. I don't really get that feeling anywhere else. You right. know, that's something that's like, yeah. I think we see it on TV, but we really don't understand the feeling. Never been. I have no idea, but it just seems so, so much energy. Everyone, the outfits, everyone's just pristine, and yeah, it's like a full-on event and experience. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So maybe Katrina, we're missing out. We need to explore the country more. Yeah. We need it. We need to do some more traveling. Okay. Well, I want to talk a little bit about, you know. Your self-titled album, which came out a few months ago, Bryson Tiller. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about what is it about this body of work that you just absolutely love or you've noticed that you have evolved differently in a way that, you know, you're getting more grounded and you're enjoying the process of putting this body of work together. What do you love about it so much? What I love about it is... Um uh, definitely the integrity behind it and just, like, mm. what what I was, like, you know, I don't know. I was just determined. Like, I'm like, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my creative power back, my uh, the control back, you know what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of people want, wanted to control me and control what type of music I was making. Like, a lot of fans or, like, you know, people, not even just fans, but just people that are just like, do this, do that. And it's just like, I'm going to do what I feel, you know what I mean? So... I think what I love about this album the most is, is definitely that, like me being able to just kind of take take charge and being mm -hmm. like, this is what it is, whether you like it or not, you know? Right. Isn't that so beautiful? It's just like, okay, you like it, great. You don't, great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely fine. freeing, you know what I mean? Like I, I look at everything now, <clears throat> you know, if things go bad or things go good, you know, God wanted that to happen. And That's I'm just right. kind of like more accepting of everything and, I just been kind of like going with, with whatever way the wind blows me, you know. Like, I look at every situation like, yeah, like it's it was meant to happen. If it happens that way, you know. Just like I said, if this album was to flop horribly and nobody ever talk about it, then that was just what was supposed to happen. And I have like peace with that, you know. How long did it take you to learn how to have that peace to let go? Long time, long time. That's I mean, an art form. I'm, that's a that's a special thing to it, have. It is because there was a lot of moments, and I think this working on this album definitely helped me get to that because uh, there were moments where a lot of songs that we wanted on the album weren't getting uh, they weren't getting cleared. Like they didn't clear none of the songs or whatever, and it was just so frustrating. But then I reached a point and I was like, you know what? Maybe this was supposed to happen. Like, you know, just start trusting God. And um, now when something bad happens, I'm just like, nah, that was supposed to happen. I think about it. I'm like, okay, good. Right. Now, what, like, you know, you uh, crying about it or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, sitting there complaining about it right. for the next 24 hours or 48 hours, whatever it is. I might as well just start thinking about the next plan. Like, God will come down and be like, hey, this is what it is now. It's just like, That's right. respect it. Right. Just move forward. Like, there's this quote out there that's like, uh, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, it ain't your plan. It's God's plan. So right. trust his plan. You know, uh, it's funny how people fall, you know, you know, we always think that we in control. And I feel like a lot of time God will just be like, all right, let's see Good what you luck. do. Good Have luck. fun with that. Go ahead. I'm going <laughs> to let you do that. And then every time we fall on our face, every single time. Always. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've just been kind of like letting God do his thing, you know, letting him be the architect of my life and just respecting his creative decisions. Mm, that's you know what I'm hard. Saying? That's letting go. I'm yeah. proud of you. It's not easy. Yeah. Especially when you're a creative. Yeah. You know, and you want things to be the way you want them to be. Yeah. And it, and it really bleeds over into your life. Yeah. You know, because you're like, well, you know, I care about my art. You care about everything. And it's like sometimes you just got to let it go. You got to let God yes, just absolutely. do what God wants to do. <laughs> yep. And be okay with the outcome. Uh-huh. What would you say is the biggest motivation behind your album? Uh, the biggest motivation behind my album? Mm, good question. Probably, uh, oh, I mean, I guess I got to answer my family for sure because I've been spending a lot of time, you know, for the past eight, nine years, I've been spending so much time just recording music right. and trying to, like, chase this goal of, like, being 
the artist that like sells out all these mm-hmm. arenas and you know selling all these crazy albums and you know I missed a lot of time with my daughter because of that I made so many sacrifices and I got I got tired of telling her um telling both of them no oh, daddy's got to work blah 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 <clears throat> I just got sick of it I'm just like you know what now with this album this is my album where I'm gonna like give it some time mm-hmm. like after this I'm just like I have to walk away for a second so I was really excited about that too getting the album done I was like all I have to do is just put my best foot forward That's right. get this album my my all and then afterwards, it's, it's over with. I go tour the album, you know what I mean? Talk to you guys yeah. about it. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I was excited and I was motivated because, like, I knew that I was going to be spending time with my daughter. Like, me and my daughter going to Japan this, uh, this summer, and I'm excited about Wait, it. Wait, have you ever been? Never. <gasps> Never been to Asia. It's my favorite place in the entire universe. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say universe because what if there's a <laughs> planet? But in the world. I so can't far. Wait to go. I can't wait to go. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you. This is this is going to be the trip that you guys really really enjoy. It's special. Japan is absolutely immaculate. Now you're big on anime, right? Yeah, I like anime. So a lot. this is this is going to be a great trip for you. Get yeah. to enjoy everything yep. that's going on. I mean, Japan is so special. Yeah, I'm a, I've been a <clears throat> anime game design. I've been uh, designing my own game for the past, like, three years. So, like, I'm excited to go over there and, like, learn some things, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just, like, see some new things and just, yeah. I'm, this is exciting. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we were just, so Lori, who's with the label, we were just talking about ramen. And I swear, I don't know if you like ramen, but the best place well, all the best places are in Japan. Me and Katrina went because we launched our summer jam overseas. Okay. And it changed my life. I've never been the same. I just want you to know this. And it's going to happen to you. And next time I see you, you're going to be like, Nessa, I'm not the same. It's just the ramen is different. The culture is beautiful. The, the attention to details. It's just, it's going to be amazing. And your kids are going to have so much fun. How do you enjoy being a girl dad? It's the best. It's the yeah. best. I don't know... Uh... You know, I was nervous about being a girl dad at first because I was like, but then again, I think I was more nervous about having a son just because, like, there were so many things that I didn't get to learn because I didn't have a father growing up. So I was like, am I even going to be a good dad I don't uh, to a son? I don't know. So um, I knew something told me that I could be a good dad to a, to a daughter. So um, I love it. It definitely helps. It, it fixes my perspective on a lot of things or changes my perspective on a lot of things, especially dealing with women. And I'm just like... You know, I, I just look at everything a lot differently. Oh, yeah? Know? How yeah. do you feel like fatherhood impacted your life? I don't know. Um, <laughs> definitely. Well, <clears throat> I was not. I was making music when I was like 17, 18. I didn't work a job or nothing like that. As soon as I found out I was going to have a kid, I was like, okay, I need to like do like do something for real. I need to take everything a little bit more seriously. Right. Um. And, and I need to try to earn some type of income because right. I didn't have nothing. So I, I got a job at UPS, and I just started. Ever since then, I've been a lot more serious about my life and uh, a little bit more intentional with the things mm. that I'm doing and how I'm spending my time. Do they know what you do for a living? Like, are they aware? That- oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but my oldest is 10, so she's very into She comes out on stage and sings with me sometimes. Um, <clears throat> she's um. But she's, they're aware that you're very famous, right? Like, you, uh, like, Or is that part still kind of weird to them? I never know how this works. Like, if you're walking the street, if you're with your kids, and someone's like, Bryson, do they they know it's because of your work, right? They know that I'm kind of famous. That's what I'm saying. Well, my oldest does anyway. Well, they're going to humble you. That's huh? what kids do. Our kids humble us. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> people care about you? Well, we don't. Give us food. <laughs> but, um, okay, so that's interesting. Yeah. I like that, though. I think that's special, though. They keep you grounded, I assume. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. Hardest part, you would say, balancing work and fatherhood. What's the hardest part about it all? Uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, the hardest part, like being an artist for me is super challenging because, like, long hours in the studio, yeah. doing this, being on the road for so many, like, this is a hard job to do when you have kids. And I can only imagine the other industries and stuff, like the sports industry. And, sure. Probably worse, actually. But, um, <clears throat> you know, for me, I, I'm i not good at multitasking. So when I'm in the studio, like, I really have to be in the studio and, like, pretend like Ooh. I'm the only person on earth sometimes. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit challenging for me to, like, balance the two. Like, I can't even think about doing anything outside of music when I'm working on music or trying to finish an album or something. So, um, but, 
you know, as of lately, I've been doing a little bit, a little bit better. You know, yeah. uh, especially on tour. Like I, I have them on tour. I used to never take my daughter on tour, but you know, as I got older, I was like, all right, I need to figure out something. Like so, that's why she's on the bus with me. She loves tour bus oh life. You know, we watch anime on the bus. We uh, eat snacks and. You know, we're hotel to hotel, ordering room service. It's just a different Gosh. life for her, you know, and she loves Wait, it. Wait, how bad? I mean, I always have anxiety over my child. Did you have anxiety before you brought her on tour? Were you thinking like... Absolutely. Oh, oh my I had God. A whole just, lot thinking, of, just you talking right now, I was like, what? Wait, what? What's yeah. going on? Yeah, yeah, I still get anxiety, and so does her mom. But, uh, you know, oh. like right now, she's um knocked out. She's been pouring a lot of all-nighters and stuff. But anyways, uh, you know, just... <laughs> Nervous and I'm just like, damn, I hope I can handle it. I hope I can handle being a dad on the road. And the first tour was a bit tough. I didn't really do much for her, but this time I'm like trying to like make sure that I spend yeah. a, a good amount of time where just not, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's it's not the first time. You know, the first time is always like the hardest of everything for sure. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say is your favorite song on the album? And then we'll tell you ours. But what's your favorite song? Can I be honest with you? Oh, no, yes. <clears throat> I don't really have a favorite no more. You don't have a favorite? No, I don't really, uh, I haven't listened to it at all. I don't really listen to it anymore. I had to like... Take a break? Yeah, because I just was listening to it so many times. And there's some songs on, her that, on that album that were like, that lasted about, uh, that were on the album for like a year and a half. So I've already heard them a million oh. times, literally, and I'm just like burnt out on it. But overall, I've just been kind of just trying to like, release myself from it and just not trying to think about it so me personally um at first i had a, fa a favorite like I, psh, probably, I probably had a favorite a week ago but like now i'm just kind of like i'm all right I'm, I'm, I'm okay without having a favorite or either ever listen to it ever again yeah no for sure and you know it makes sense you've listened to it at least a couple thousand times before yeah. it comes out yeah. right so by the time we get it and you know we're enjoying whatever she wants that's actually what we play here but you know persuasion that's a collective favorite for katrina chrissy and myself um yeah. i personally like calypso but i t totally make sense what yeah. was the hardest song to make for you on the album the hardest song to make whether it invoked different emotions you had to dig deep but you're like but i but i pulled through and i made that happen <clears throat> As far as that goes, I can't really think of anything that was like, I mean, maybe maybe a song called Eon Lust because I, that was the first song I did without auto-tune. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the only song on the album with no auto-tune. So maybe maybe that one, but then also Undertow because uh, it was really, you know, Pooh Bear wrote it and, you know, he sung his, you know, sung crazy on it and I had to, like, try to, like, match him, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So as far as that goes... As far as, like, difficulty, as far as recording goes, I would say sure. those two. But uh, as far as writing goes and, you know, mm -hmm. on a personal level, I don't really, I don't really think it was too many difficult challenges that I had to go overcome. Okay, so let's imagine someone's about to go out on a date. They're about to pick somebody up, and they want to play a song off this album. What would you say is, like, okay, put this song on. Right, you know, you're going to open up the door. Nice lady's going to step inside. Have this song on. It's going to, you know, help ease the tension a little bit. Because, you know, first dates can get, we can get nervous on it. What song would you pick to play? Well, you said tension, and I did say that word on one of the songs called Attention. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I'll probably say that one, you know, maybe. It's like a little, it's kind of like a, a sensual vibe. Yeah. Um, Kind of easy. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably say that one. That one? Yeah. <laughs> Are there songs on here that people think it's about them, but it's not? No, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> no one's hit you up and like Bryson. <clears throat> I think you're talking. No. Nah. Okay, because you would make it. There's nobody that could hit me up and say that, but no. Nah, <laughs> okay, so what would you say has been the biggest difference between this body of work versus anniversary? The biggest difference. The biggest difference is the the number one biggest difference is that I work with writers. I never worked with writers before on any album, so. um you know, after anniversary, I realized I was like, okay, that's the last time that I will, you know, do this by myself. Like, um, it's fun, as fun as it is. Like, I'm like, I want to make different types of music and, right. and, and and reach different people. So, uh, yeah, that's the biggest difference. You had to let go of control doing that. Exactly. How yeah. was that? Uh, it was challenging at first. I was like right. super nervous about it. But then the more and more I thought about it, I was like, man, some of the best songs ever created were like written by other people and or, or, or a collaborative effort overall. So 
yeah, I had, I had to let go. How was it working with Victoria Monet? Amazing. She's a really nice person. Very humble, very oh. talented. And, uh, you know, she was, um, yeah, she just made it super easy to, to do that song. And I asked, I said, Victoria, I'm looking for, like, I, I need, like, a song that people will say is the best song on the album. And, you know, for a while, she it, it was that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what the best song on the album is, to be honest. It's kind of hard because there's so many different types of songs. It's not like, you know, maybe if the album was full of persuasions, then it would be a little bit more clear. But, right. Um, or maybe we'll just ask the people of London the next time you go after, and get yeah. their opinions. Because yeah, they'll like tell them. me and they'll be honest with me, too. <laughs> yeah. And they'll sing it at the shows. Right. <laughs> How did that come about, you and Victoria? Was that, like, managers, or did you know her? I reached out to her um, after I heard her album, Jaguar, just because mm -hmm. I thought it was so amazing. And, you know, I like to give artists their props, man. I feel like a lot of artists <clears throat> don't really do too much of that. You know, sometimes they'll hear something that um, is is loved by many, and they're like, why? they're like, they'll question, like, why do so many people love this? And then they'll never reach out to that person or, or whatever, or maybe it'll take years for them. Or, and then there's other times where it's just like, I don't know. I just, I think it's important to let artists know and let creatives know, period, that, you know, if you like something that, th that they're doing, just like, let them know, you know, that changes somebody's whole oh, yeah. world when you do. Like, yeah, I know it definitely does for me. Just when the artist reaches out to me and says, hey, I really like this or I right. really love that, you know, and... Con or even just a congratulations sometimes. Mean, oh, isn't that nice? It's so thoughtful. It may be a small gesture, but it's thoughtful. It it's is, like, oh, man. you took time out of your day to let me know that like, uh -huh. you enjoyed my work. Yeah. Can't take it for granted. Yeah. And it makes sense you and Victoria Monet working together. She's a great writer, yeah, right? She's amazing. Witty with it as well. So, how was that? Like, how was the process of putting the song together? Was there any, like, were you like, hey, I want you to take that out? Or, like, are you even allowed to do that, like, when you're working with someone? Like, how does that work for, you know, she let artists? Me, she let me have a lot of creative control on it because it was, um, you know, there was it was different. The song was different when I heard it. It was arranged differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I heard it, I, I kind of wanted to have a, a specific energy for it. Um, and uh, she was open to it. She liked it a lot. And um, it was pretty simple. She brought it to me. It was just the hook. And uh, instrumental. Me and my brother Charlie Heat sat in the studio for a couple hours, arranged it the way we wanted it, and um, yeah, the rest yeah. is history. That's amazing. I love when I see because clearly I can't sing, write nothing. That's why we do radio, Katrina and myself. Like <laughs> otherwise, we would try to be an artist. But I just love seeing creatives come together and create something really cool. It's like Me it's too. special the collaboration. Did yeah. you guys go in the studio, or was this something you guys send to each other? How does that work in music land? We were in the studio together. Yeah. She pulled up and played me a couple songs. I played her a couple songs from the album. Her favorite that. happens to be Calypso. Um, but yeah, that was how it happened. I love that. Okay, so let's talk about whatever she wants. Okay. When was the last time you took someone on a shopping spree at Rodeo? These are your lyrics. <laughs> Rodeo? Uh, it's been a while because I haven't really been, spent too much time on Rodeo, but uh, definitely shopping sprees else, other places for sure. Okay. Paris and, and whatnot. Oh, Paris is not a bad <laughs> replacement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was it was the shopping spree within this year? Is it last year or years ago? This year. Okay. Last year. Uh -huh. All right, so it's true to the lyrics. Absolutely, yeah. That definitely. was the part Katrina was concerned about. You have to find out if he really went on a shopping spree I this do. year. I, I was like, oh, we're going to find I, out. I really did that. I really did. Now, do you go... Spent a couple. I was going to say, do you have to have, like, a budget? Like, is this a discussion that's talked about? Like, hey, we're going to go shopping. You know, my, my rule is, uh, you know, especially if we drove and I... Usually drive sports cars and shit. so like I'm like whatever you can fit in the car, you know what I mean? We can we can do. But to be fair, sports cars kind of small. Yeah, on the smaller side, I like but, how that sounds though. Yeah, or you know if if we have SUV or something, you know however much we can carry, let's just you know that's that my other rule. We like the SUV talk. Yeah, we like that. Let's yeah. let's do the SUV talk. Yeah. <laughs> Either or, you know, it just depends. Yeah, because you know I don't know you can run up. One time I was in Chanel and I was like, man, it's, it's, I just want to say it like they, you could get a couple things and next thing you know, it'd be like $40,000. You'd be like, hey, okay. Oh. Right. So I, you know. Has, has your card ever declined? No. 
never. Do you ever have this fear? Well, I take that. Back. I have yes. anxiety, so I always have this fear. Even if I have money, I'm like, uh, my card's gonna get declined. I don't it, know if it's just because it, dec- it declines in places where they don't take Amex. So that's the only place. My that card. sounds very rich. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds very rich. Okay, so so how does someone spoil you? What do you like? Uh. Like, if someone is like, I want to get them a nice birthday present, right? You're talking to somebody, and they want to do something nice. Like, what would what would wow you? Massages, random massages, back rubs. Those, I feel like most men could, will always appreciate those. Like, ladies, if you don't know what to get your man, you know what I mean? Just, just a like, massage. Just come give them a massage. <laughs> and don't complain about it. Just do it because, of like, and really be into it. You know what right. I mean? Like, I promise you'll appreciate that. You're low maintenance. Yeah. You're not like, oh, we got to travel, get me a nice yeah, watch. That. Okay. That's that, not. That is some intimacy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. So, how have things, I know you've opened up and talked about having social anxiety. How's it been for you? How has. How have you been able to cope with it? And, like, are there methods that you can share with somebody who might be going through that that has, you know, helped you out? <clears throat> um, Sorry. Um, Personally, I mean, I really haven't, you know, as of lately, I haven't really struggled with it, man. I've just been talking to people, you know, I talk to people whenever I can. Early on, it was hard for me to do that because I was, like, newly a celebrity. Right. And, uh you know, these p- the people that I was talking to have been celebrities for years, and they're just so used to being so cool and just being in the <laughs> forefront. And, and I just wasn't. I'm just like, I don't even know how to talk to you. I don't know what the proper thing to say is. Um, I remember, sh- you know, me and Big, uh, Big Sean's conversations um, now versus uh, when I first met him are like night and day because I used to be so nervous on the phone with him. Like, didn't know. I was like, all right, man, well, thank you. Uh, th- you know, that's, yeah, I saw that. And now I'm just like, I'll FaceTime him randomly and we're just talking. It's just, it's just normal. It's like talking to my big brother or something, you know? Yeah. And you guys are both fathers. There's a yeah, lot exactly. to have conversation about, but it's not easy, you know, but I'm just glad that you have been open about it and talked about it. I know you even talked about, you know, talked about even facing depression and how you overcame that in 2017. I mean, I, I think the conversation is important, and I think it's really amazing when people are willing to share something so vulnerable, you mm-hmm. know? did How did your family or friends or loved ones react? Were they like, oh, we had no idea, or were they in it with you and proud of you as well, you know, sharing your experience with your fans? You know, some people don't didn't like that. People that were close to me, they didn't want me giving the, like... The people there are some people out there that would know they don't want me to reveal too much because they didn't want people to like know how to hurt me, you know what I mean? And just get really good at that and be like, oh, okay, so this is what gets under his skin. Mm-hmm. Now it's just like that's what got under my skin for a long time, but that, I don't get under my skin now. Like, I just I laugh at it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so aloof to the situation where like people, like, I could be on Instagram and just comment something on some random funny video that I saw, and then there would be, like, 10 comments replying to me telling me how how bad I am at music or whatever the hell, tagging me, oh, cry about it, whatever the hell they be talking about. And I just, you know, it's funny because they'll just try to do everything that they possibly can to, like, pull me down, but it literally doesn't affect me at all. I'm just like, man, you know, I I genuinely don't even think that they're real people, to be honest. Like, I just... Most of the time, they're so not. So that's why I'm just like, I can't give... Yeah, that's right. I can't give this a real even reaction because it's like I don't think a real human would ever say this to my face. You know what I mean? Of course not. Uh, or or not not even just to my face. I just don't think a real human would care that this much to be. You know what I mean? So I was like, there's no way you could be real. To be so. that focused, like, yeah. come on, okay, yeah. bot. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> okay, just, that's, bot. I genuinely don't think they're real people. So I just yeah. Speaking of bots and technology, you as a writer, how do you feel about AI? And how do you? I feel- love AI. You love it. I love it. Absolutely. <gasps> okay. So you don't feel like it's going to take over everything, our world? I definitely think that it's going to take over. <laughs> it's going to be. Have you watched Black Mirror on Netflix? Yeah, I've seen it's it. It's definitely happening. But you're okay with AI. Like, totally. I'm okay with AI. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> wait. So wait. How I just think it's so helpful, to, especially to helpful. creatives. And, um, but, you know, as long as we just can, like, manage it properly, I think yeah. it'll be fine. But... I don't know. I, I like it. I think it's dope. You know, I saw a quote from a guy. He was like, you know, a lot of people are worried about that they're, that they're going to lose their job to AI. Oh, yeah. But 
you're going to lose your job to somebody who knows how to use AI is right. really what, what's going to happen. So that's what, um, yeah, I agree with that statement. Um, I think AI is amazing if uh, used properly. If you Would you ever, like, create a song with it? Absolutely, yeah. I've actually uh, kind of already started that, but, um, yeah. You are so the future right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you're going to go move to London, apparently, and leave us behind. But anyway. I just might, you know. I just <laughs> might. <laughs> okay, so now, do you remember when we last talked, we were talking about video games? Because I know you're a gamer. You uh -huh. love gaming. And do you remember we were talking about Super Mario Kart? And I was like, yeah, I love playing with Mushroom. And you <laughs> looked at me and you nicely made fun of me because I really meant to say Toad. Oh, Do you <laughs> I don't remember that. It's funny, though. I brought my video game with me. So okay. if you don't mind, I just wanted to spend a few minutes playing against you because I know I could win. Okay. All right. Let's do it. I I'm not that bad. Wait, I don't even know where... Where are we going right now? Okay, here we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back in. If I can just be in second place at this point, like, I think you'll be. Oh, who did? Did you do that? So you can't really get one another to be on first place. Wow. No. I'm now in sixth. This is crazy. I need a lightning bolt. Mushroom. How? If I just keep tapping it. Have to spam it. Oh, there. Oh, so it's the left that I got to press. Uh, and this whole time I'm like, yo, how am I not using my superpowers? Whoa. Hold on. No. 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 I think they cheated. It's someone from London. <laughs> okay, so how did I do? I, I was not first. That was pretty good. I was at third place. You were first. You finished... I think last year already by the time I caught up. Do you think I can compete? Like, you know, if someone wanted to play, like they're not playing against somebody who's just completely removed. Uh, you wasn't drifted at all. Hold on to certain items. Didn't hold on. Just hold your, your place. Like if you have like a banana or whatever, like you can just, or like a shell or something. And you're in second place, you want to like hold that behind you so like nobody can use anything. That's why that third place beat me because I didn't hold yeah you have to like use it as a defense behind you to make sure or whatever and then you have to keep getting as many items as you can to always keep like a defense item basically I failed well I had a great time I know you're working on your video game what is it going to be like I can't tell you too much about it just yet but um it's going to be easy to play you'll be able to play it yeah. and I hope you'll you'll um buy it. I will absolutely and then the next I promise and the next time I see you Remember this promise, we're gonna play it. And will I make us proud showing, you know, my mother skills playing this? Like, like, can I, like, you know how kids always think their parents are like kind of, you know, do you think I'm gonna hold it down? Like, oh my. As soon as you start drifting and hitting those jumps. Then I'm not. I don't then I'm not. Then you'll be, you'll be. I'll be washed. No, I'll no, be no. no, no, you'll be great if you do those things. Oh. So you need to do those things. Oh. Wait, so drifting is a good thing? Yes. 